here we are at my workbench in my garden. I thought it would be really interesting to show you guys what I keep around, what kind of junk that I hoard away and I stick here in a semi-organized manner on my workbench because I know that I'm gonna need to use it later to MacGyver. Gardening is problem solving. You're gonna learn that. Um, you have to be prepared for the problems and the more you do it, the more you know what you need to be prepared with. So after about five or six years of very heavy gardening, you can see that I have a lot of preparation here and I'm gonna show you what I have so maybe you can be more prepared than I was when I first started. So let's start with um, tools because I think tools are probably the most important part. First and foremost, garden shears. This is definitely the most common tool that I use in my garden. Um, it's really simple that, you know, there's many different brands that make these, but basically you can trim whatever, you know? I, this is getting a little too long right here. I'm gonna trim that. You know, it's boom, done. Um, <laughs> smells good. Um, I also use it to cut things like my quarter inch irrigation hose, which I'm not sure if you're, supposed to because maybe you're supposed to keep these for only the plants but I mean why not it's a multi-purpose tool very 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 useful I definitely recommend having one of these trowel the <laughs> garden fork this is also something I use a lot because it helps break up little you know clumps of soil when I'm turning over new compost and worm castings to get my beds ready for a new planting. Um, this helps me do that without getting so much dirt under my fingernails. Um, nothing will ever stop that from fully happening, but <laughs> this helps. Same kind of idea, this little rake. You know, you kind of just get what works best for you and you'll figure it out. I have a comb. I don't know what that's for, but I used it up here for something at some point, so now it's here and I can use it again if I so desire. Yeah, see, I just have a million. Like, I have these ones too. These ones I've had for a long time. Um, I try to clean them, but they continually rust. It's fine. The one thing you want to do is make sure that if you are using any shears to cut any diseased plant, that you sterilize them after before you use them on any healthy plants. Because just like humans, plants can catch diseases from each other. So. Um, I don't usually have that issue here, but if you found something with like mold on it, for instance, and you're cutting it with these, you want to make sure to use alcohol on these and sterilize them before you cut a nice healthy tree like this one with it. I even have a little mini saw because sometimes with these big citrus trees, when I need to really prune them and it's, you know, bigger than what my little shears can handle, I use this. So I'm just going to shove all those back in there. Some of these are construction tools. Honestly, these three are my most used tools in my entire bench, so good place to start. I have a variety of what I would describe as seed starter trays. Um, so these are the things that I use every year, every spring when I'm starting seeds that say start indoors. I take these and I use a bit of seed starter soil or just potting soil works fine. Put it in there, put my seeds, and I put it on some kind of a tray, which I have a few right here, um, so that it can catch the water that drains out so that it doesn't get all over my kitchen counter or you know the floor in my office or wherever. I happen to be starting my seeds. Um, so I just keep these around. I've probably had these for five, six years and yeah, just reuse them. I also have these. Um, these ones I don't really like that much because you can see how open the bottom is and um, soil will fall right through that except for when it doesn't, but it mostly does. But, you know, they're a handy size. This is like an intermediate between the seed starter and the bed. So if you want to let it grow a little bit more, you can. Um, nice to have around. So now we're getting into the MacGyver stuff. I have twine and I have string. Um, certain vining plants like peas and cucumbers and you know, a lot of different things like to grow on strings um, or other structures and string and twine just happen to be kind of the cheap way to do it. So I have a bunch of this and I have nails and hammer and I just like, you know, create my own little contraptions depending on where that plant wants to grow. 
I have a bunch of clothespins, which is another kind of MacGyver item. Um, I got like a 500 pack of these and it, I've gone through them. I use them for so many things. Um, I use them to kind of attach shade fabric onto trellises so that it creates a little shade temple for my new seedlings when I plant them. I also use them to um, label my new seedlings. So if this was a pot that I was planting my seedling in and it was an okra seedling, I would just write okra right here with a sharpie and then I go like that. So it's a really easy way to label if you don't have a popsicle stick. Also, popsicle sticks, when you stick them in the soil, they tend to act like a wick. They wick moisture out of the pot and into the air. Um, so I like these because they don't actually touch the soil, so they don't do that. This wire, and this is like a twisty wire, and then this is some other wire that I don't even know where it came from. It's like, I think it wrapped around some chicken wire that I bought. Um, so it was kind of like a packaging supply, but this is what your brain gets like after you've had to MacGyver so many different little things in your garden. You're like, I could do a lot with that. I'm gonna keep that. So <laughs> I have these little bits and then, you know, someday I'll be working and I'll be like, I need to connect this chicken wire to my garden bed so that I can support the corn because the corn's falling over because of the wind. And boom, I have this and I just wrap it around and I can twist it and I can fasten whatever I need. Um, so it's great. <clears throat> Bendy wire is really, really helpful. A bit of really old, cool looking rope that I've used for a variety of different things. This is a hose end sprayer and it has um, an attachment here for your hose and then it has like a spray nozzle right here and inside this um, you can mix pesticides, fertilizers, had some mold on my um, on my grapevines last year and I just got this and attached it. So I mean it's like a ten dollar thing and I was like that's expensive. I'm gonna keep that around in case I need it again. <laughs> I also have just this little sprayer right here. Um, I've used this a lot for orchids because orchids like to be misted. Sprayers are good to have around no matter what. Um, a lot of things come in concentrate. A lot of things like to be misted if they like humidity, um, houseplants even. So really, really handy thing to just have around. For Christmas this year, my mom, well, every year my mom is like, what do you want? I never know what to get for you. You're so hard to buy for. Anything for the garden, like gardening tools, gloves, like just gardening things, you know, I'll, I'll always love it. And so she went to this really fancy store and she got me a couple of amazing things. She got me some new shears that are beautiful probably the nicest gardening gloves I've ever owned and I never even want to wear them because they're so nice. But she also got me this, which is a little knife. And I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And I'm actually going to use this soon. I haven't used it yet. Um, I'm going to use it to do what's called air layering, which is a propagation method that is pretty cool, um, very scientific. Um, about to do a segment on that in the coming weeks, so wait for that. But even a knife can be very, very handy in the garden. And then I have a bunch of gloves. I mean, I just keep, and the, the nice ones I said, they're not even in here. <laughs> I just keep getting more and more. But they, you know, they get dirty and they get old pretty quick if you're using them, so I just keep them around. I think I'm hoping that people will come over and help me and I'll have enough, but I don't think I'm ever going to have five people in this garden helping me. I really don't. <laughs> and that's okay with me because I actually like my garden time by myself. I think it's a really nice time to just be reflective and not worry about entertaining someone. It's, you can be very creative with all the different things that you have around. Um, you know, one of my favorite things is trying to create unique support structures for my plants so I'll be like I'm gonna stick a trellis in that box and then I'm gonna take a bunch of twine and like put it overhead and attach it to that wall and, it's, and then I'm gonna grow my cucamelons on it and it's gonna go over the chair so I can sit there in the sh dappled shade and relax and if I try to explain this to a friend who's visiting me in my garden they're like okay sounds, sounds cool I guess <laughs> they just don't get it there's a bunch more things here. I have a bin that has, you know, like staples for my staple gun. It has nails, it has screws, um, hinges, 
Um, this is just all stuff that is left over from building things around here and you know it's gonna be useful at some point so I just loosely organize it into this bucket and now I know where to find it when I need it. Um, I have another bucket with irrigation stuff. The one thing, one or two things that I do want to show you um, are these bubblers which um, is the primary way that I use to um, irrigate my beds up here. It's technically a drip system but this is an attachment. This is the quarter inch tubing that kind of um, that you install inside each bed and you install the different drippers or bubblers to the ends of it depending on what you have planted there. Um, these things I love because they have this adjustable top that you just like screw and unscrew to adjust the output. Um, so every time I plant something in my garden I have to adjust the um, the water for that specific planting and arrangement and these make it really easy. So. I usually have a whole roll of this sitting around because you need it um, to change things up. I'll have to get some more of this. I usually have a few of these. Um, I also have extra little attachments like this is a little dripper head. Um, I have that. The green one is a slightly different amount of water per hour so I have options. These are um, part of a support system that's modular support system that I use Okay, so say I stick these three into the soil. Now, I've got these cross beams that are connecting all of them. Whoop! <laughs> I didn't really plan this, but that's what this is all about. It's just on the fly. I have this stuff. I didn't buy it in preparation to show you guys. It's just stuff that I have because I use it all the time. So, okay. I have imagine these are stuck into the soil and I have a little tomato plant growing in there. As the tomato plant grows, its branches are going to hang over these cross beams and it's going to keep it upright. And like I said before, what's really great is that then when the tomato plant gets higher, you can be like, oh no problem, I've got some more of these guys and I can just add another one and it won't fall over like it just was on me because it will be stuck in the soil. So. <laughs> There you go. Um, these things are really great. I live in a city and I don't have as much room as say a gardener in the Midwest would. Um, so I can increase the output of my plants by allowing them to grow vertically, which is what these sort of things really, really help with. So this is one option of supporting your plants, a traditional trellis like this one. Um, this one I have obviously been using for a long time because you can see how weathered it is and it's a little flimsy but um, it still does the trick for a plant that's not super super heavy so I wouldn't put a melon on this one because melons get really heavy but you know maybe like a little cucumber or you know um, sweet pea vines or something like that. Neem oil, I've mentioned this to you guys before. Um, this is a natural product, it comes from a tree um, that grows in Southeast Asia called the neem tree. Um, basically it's very similar to the tea tree and it's just um, a, a taste and a sort of texture that bugs don't like. So um, this is one thing that really really helps across the board. It says it gets rid of spider mite, white flies, powdery mildew, rust, I know it works on aphids. Um, there's so many different things that can work on um, scale which, you know, maybe you don't know what it is yet, you're lucky. Um, <laughs> neem oil, really, really important one to have. Natural products. This company um, is doing a lot of those types of products. Nothing is chemical, it's all coming from other plants. Um, so this is hot pepper wax, and obviously um, the bugs don't enjoy spicy food the way that I do, so they stay away. So I've noticed a lot of, um, little bite marks out of my bean leaves recently and I sprayed this on there and it stopped. So hot pepper wax is a great one. This is spinosad and spinosad is specifically to control worms and caterpillars. Um, if you're growing tomatoes it's very highly likely that you're gonna get some green tomato hornworm. So you really have to keep an eye out for them as their season progresses and the best thing to do is pick them off and then just squish them, which is gross. But then if you wanna prevent them from coming back, 
this is the thing you need, spinosad. This is my favorite fertilizer for the garden. Dr. Earth, homegrown, organic, tomato, vegetable, and herb fertilizer. This is just getting sprinkled into the soil um, on the top, and then you can kind of rough it up a little bit. But just read the instructions. It's very self-explanatory. I get this giant bag because I will use it up. This is my garden trolley. And I got this thing kind of randomly. I didn't really think about what I was gonna use it for, but I found that it is one of the best things to have in a garden this size. Um, my workbench that you just saw in the rest of the video is way at one end of the garden. The garden goes all the way through here, then it turns the corner and it goes around there. So if I wanna work on, say, um, creating some piece of irrigation, or if I need to repot a plant, and put it into the, the bed over here. I don't want to have to be walking back and forth to my workbench. So this is a great little system. It's right at perfect working height. Um, and I can just roll it around. I can put whatever supplies I happen to need on these lower shelves. And then I can just have a workspace that travels with me wherever I need to go in the garden. Now you know everything that I have hoarded and stuck in my garden. Um, and you can see how useful things can be time and time again here. So um, remember, it's great to be a hoarder when you're gardening. And it totally falls in line with all of our beliefs about saving the environment and being self-sustainable. Um, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, every little clothespin or bit of chicken wire that you can use again um, just contributes to that cause. So. Um, you know, remember to keep fertilizer, neem oil, and maybe some spinosad in your garden for when you need it because you will get bugs um, and that is normal. But I think the moral here is that gardening is problem solving and you can best solve problems when you're prepared for them. So hopefully you saw some things in this video that um, you could potentially stock up in your garden and be prepared for the different issues that may come up for you. And just remember, it happens, it's normal. Even if you lose a plant, you can always grow another one. So it's never the end of the world um, and you will get better and better as you go. Um, all right guys, if you found this helpful, subscribe to my channel, like my videos. It really, really helps to be able to um, get more content out to you. So I thank you for watching and happy gardening, everyone. Mwah.